Well, so far we've talked about people making themselves smaller, being pipped and getting smaller or shriveling in and believing that you're smaller. What's the opposite of small? Well, of course, big or bigness. The word bigness comes to mind. It's actually, if you look at the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, it describes it as a very, very rare word. It is. The only time I can ever remember encountering it was Michael Palin using it at the concert for George, George Harrison, the Beatle, where he described uh, George's bigness in the smallness of our lives. It was a joke, of course. But seriously, if smallness is the problem, let's get big. And maybe the reversal of being pipped is to grow in being. Now, what is being? Well, I, I had this kind of epiphany way back. I can't remember which, you know, I read a lot. I had many mentors and I can't remember where the idea actually came from. But there's no question that I understood suddenly in a sort of visionary moment that space is being. Space, space is how much you occupy. So the more you occupy, the bigger you are in being. Now, of course, this tends to the non-material mind, extended mind model, that it's non-local, it's not fixed in space or time. It's like a field. In other words, it's infinite and stretches to the ends of the universe, if you like. Uh, that reminds me of another joke by the English writer G.K. Chesterton. And he said, the cosmos is just about the smallest hole in which you can squeeze a human mind. Very witty if you think about it. But the, if you sit down and picture yourself stretching out to the ends of the universe, then that's a pretty big state of being. I would say probably most of us are not so big. But you know, what I want you to do, or encourage you to do, is to start developing the sense or feeling of being over and above just the place you're looking from. I totally believe in non-material mind, and I believe the only reason we have the illusion that we're inside our skulls is because we're trained to be that way. I don't think kids are, but you know, kids are highly imaginative. They can be here, there, and everywhere. Uh, but that's eventually knocked out of them. They're told to think properly and get things correct, which is that you're inside your skull. But really, if you're a non-material consciousness presence, the only model I've got that makes this very vivid is to picture yourself looking in to the physical universe like this. You're looking in to the universe around us, but you're not in it. You're simply looking into it. And for those of you who've been outside your body, I've had many out-of-body out experiences, so have a lot of people. Telepathy, past lives, and all those things will tell you that you're not actually dependent on your brain or body. It's a, a habit conditioning, that's all. So, to create bigness, we need more space. And this can be very empowering. It can be the very opposite of what pipping and smallness is all about. And here, I'm thinking of the writings of Viktor Frankl, the man who wrote the book Man's Search for Meaning. It's a very graphic book in which he described, he was a Viennese psychiatrist and he was Jewish. So in the, the war, the Second World War, the Nazis took over. He was interned in a concentration camp. Well, he survived. And he wrote a book based on what he observed. And the one th thing that seemed to come round over and over was that people would survive mainly if they had some sort of purpose or vision for themselves in the future. They wanted to do something. Frankel was talking about a time, you know, a rosy time in the future. But in fact, what Frankel missed, and I want to add to this scenario, it, it, he didn't talk in terms of space. He talked about time, some future time. But also the person would have to create the space in which to be in that future time. So despite the horrors, the miseries, the despair and dangers of living in a concentration camp, if you could expand your, your beingness outwards to this other place that you are going to be in the future, that made you very, very much able to survive the horrors. And in fact, you know, that's what the point that Frankel was making. Those that had some kind of vision or view of themselves over and above the crushed, tiny, pipped little creatures that were herded into concentration camps and then systematically killed, 
the answer was to make yourself bigger in both space and time. Now, I would like to quote the very much beloved 1911 edition of Encyclopedia Britannica. That was the last encyclopedia. Forever after, it was edited by eggheads who wrote impossibly complicated articles. You'd have to be a professor or have a doctorate in the entry in the encyclopedia to understand what the hell it was saying, frankly. But the 1911 edition was an everyman. It was easy to understand and it had some very arresting ideas. For example, it said time and space are constructs of the human mind and we're not really going to understand either time or space until we've got a better grasp of what the human mind is. It talked about the mind, of course, I would say consciousness and being which is not quite the same thing as mind at all. But in any case, it means that these are concepts that exist outside the brain, in the mind, and they're not biological concepts at all. Okay, well, I don't know if I'm making this point well at all, but what I want to encourage you to do is cultivate the art of being and space, that be big. And don't just think of the moon, but think of yourself big enough to embrace the moon. So it's not you're here and it's over there, it's I am surrounding the moon, I embrace everything. Uh, it'd be good if you get better at it, embrace the solar system, then you eventually embrace galaxies and the whole nature of the universe and being. There's a, a part of the universe, our existing universe, that's called Lania Kea, and that's nearby. It's Hawaiian for the greatest heaven or big heaven. And it's the, the cluster of, the, a super cluster of nearby stars and galaxies, thousands of billions of galaxies all connected with one another. And remember, every galaxy has hundreds of billions of stars. I mean, it's a staggering amount of stuff if you're into stuff, but really it works for me as non-material mind rather than a bunch of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> these are hope useful concepts, something to practice. Practice being more, being bigger, and practice that concept. Even if you just did it every morning for like 30 seconds, just say, I am this big, I am embracing all of these things. I am as big as heaven and earth combined. And also I'd like to give you a little exercise. I've published it in a few books, but in this one, this one particular, some of you have it, I know. Uh, boom, you know, the explosion of tips and tricks and techniques, teachings to expose and grow your mental, well, explode, I should say, your mental powers. Anyway, what I want to read from you, uh, from this, is, is by my, by a former girlfriend. She was a lovely, sweet Belgian girl called, well, we called her Telly. Her real name was Machtel, which is Flemish for Matilda, but that's a bit of a mouthful. So everyone, including her sisters and mum and dad, uh, called her Telly or Telly Belly for short. Now she and I, she was a most wonderful person, very wise beyond her years. She and I were lovers briefly and I cherished that time and the memory still. She was half my age. She was 26 and I was 52, still licking my wounds from the breakup of my first marriage. But Telly really did wonders to heal me. Anyway, she had this little procedure that she wrote up and I'd like to read it to you and share it with you. It's actually rather wonderful. It's a little exercise you can do for yourself any, any day, any morning, on the commute, on a bus, on a train, or in a crowded place, or shopping center, or cafeteria. It's lovely, and as you'll see, very wise. So this is in her telling, okay. Sometime early during the day, maybe on the train to work, or sitting in the coffee bar, do these steps. Remind yourself that you are a god or goddess experiencing earth life. If you don't really believe that, then pretend you're a big spirit from the sky. So this is the pipping connection, okay? You're going to be a big spirit. Telly then asks you to reach out your being to enfold everyone in the space or room. Pour forth all the love you can generate to every person present, worthy or seemingly unworthy. Wish them at least a few minutes of delight and beauty in their life. You know you can do it for them. It's in your power. And note what comes back to you during the day. You'll be often 
they're surprised at the pleasant things. And in fact, what I'm going to read you next is something that the Dalai Lama came out with two or three years later. Than, I call this Telly's Grace, by the way, or Telly's Blessing, and I cherish it very greatly. But the Dalai Lama came up with something similar long after Telly's idea. Uh, if you know, if you check the calendar years and so on. So let me read you what the Dalai Lama had to say about this too. His Holiness shared with the audience a simple practice that will increase loving and compassion in the world. He asked everyone in the group to return home and share it with as many people as possible. One, spend five minutes at the beginning of each day remembering we all want the same thing, to be happy and to be loved and we are all connected one to another. Two, spend five minutes breathing in and cherishing yourself, followed by breathing out and cherishing the others. If you think about people you have difficulty in cherishing, extend your love to them anyway. Three, during the day, extend that attitude to everyone you meet, cherishing the simplest person clerks and attendants, etc., as well as the important people in your life. Cherish the people you love and the people you dislike. Continue this practice no matter what happens or what anyone does to you. And as a little note from His Holiness, cherishing can be done wordlessly. Just allow yourself to feel the love and appreciation that is already in your heart. Well, of course, these words are rather wonderful. And I hope that by practicing this sort of daily ritual, you begin on that journey of creating for yourself more sense of space and bigger being. You are not confined to your skull. It's a, an illusion that we're forced into. I mean, that itself, I suppose, is ultimate pipping, is saying you're just this tiny little blob of jelly inside there, and that's all you are in being. Oh no, you're not. You're an immortal, wise, all-powerful, all-knowing, huge presence, practically Godhead. All right, I hope that helps in furthering the, uh, the understanding of pips and pipping and in, in deepening the experience of escaping from the experience of making yourself smaller or feeling smaller than you really are. Thank you.